Things are quiet at Crimson Field right now, but not for long because Logan is playing host to Skyview in a huge in-valley rivalry game that also will have a big effect on what happens in Region 5. Logan is 6-0, undefeated, and a juggernaut on offense, averaging more than 40 points per game. Skyview, on the other hand, seems like they've kind of found themselves a little bit last week in a big game against Box Elder that you saw right here on the Valley Channel, able to get that offense going, and the defense is starting to find their way for the Bob Cats, but they have an awfully big order to fill this week against the Logan Grizzlies and DJ Nelson. He uses six and seven different receivers, and don't forget about John Schmidt out of the backfield. He's the leading receiver on this team as a fullback. So, I don't know. It's pick your poison if you're defending the Logan Grizzlies, and one of the reasons the Grizzlies are so much better this year, their defense is going to unfold for you right here on the Valley Channel on the Game of the Week. I'm Jillian Michaels, TV's toughest trainer, and now you can burn five times the calories working out around the world with me. Introducing the new Nordic Track Incline Trainer. The ultimate weight loss machine just got better. iFit Live, powered by Google, brings the world to your feet. Walk on the Golden Gate Bridge. Run on the beaches of Hawaii. Hike the Rocky Mountains. The new design of the Incline Trainer automatically inclines to 40% and declines to 6% to simulate the world's terrain. So you burn five times the calories. No other machine does that. And all you have to do is walk. Plus, with the innovation of iFit Live, I'll control the speed and the incline of your workout so you get results guaranteed. Call or go online to order your new Nordic Track X7i. Get this experience, the best trainer. And I guarantee you'll get amazing results. For more information, call 1-800-304-1606 or go online to nordictrack.com. Logan and Skyview tangle in the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. The Game of the Week is brought to you by Icon. Health and fitness never give up. Lewiston State Bank, your hometown bank. Palmer Home Furnishings, the lowest prices in the Valley. Guaranteed. Yes, he need him jewelers, middle of the block, sign of the club. Cash Valley Specialty Hospital, you do have a choice in health care. ARS Blood and Fire Cleanup will fix your disaster. Magical Moon Toys, come check out our new location in North Logan. Aggie's Sports Grill, the place to be. Lynn's Audio and Video, Cash Valley's Audio and Video Specialist. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's television station. Well, hello everyone and welcoming into the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. We are at Crimson Field on the campus of Logan High School. In a beautiful late September, last day of September evening. And it's, man, we were here the first uh, on opening night, and I think it's warmer tonight than it was then. Uh, it's a spectacular night. Great backdrop, great rivalry game, and a very big game for Skyview. Big game for Logan always, of course, but maybe bigger for Skyview at a 2-4 and four record. That's Lee Vaughn, our color commentator. I'm Eric Olson, your play-by-play. -play. Welcome to Fantasy Island. We'll be your hosts. <laughs> hey, Mike Favero is living the coach's dream because he's got a 6-0 and team, a quarterback that's already committed to a D1 program and a defense that's really coming on and has a lot of kids coming back next season. I had a chance to talk with him just a few minutes ago and ask him about tonight's game. Well, Coach, here we go. It's the in-valley rivalry games, and, you know, what's the cliche? Throw the records out, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, people can say that, but I don't know. I've been, people have been watching the Grizzlies, and you guys look like a buzzsaw. Well, we've played well thus far, but... The Skyview had a great win against a very good Box Elder team who's expect, expected to contend for the region championship this year in our region, so we expect a tough game. Well, Logan's always seems to be able to you know, put together some offensive numbers, but that defense for you guys, one of the tops as far as scoring defense in 4A, that's really, I think, pushed you over the top this year. Well, it's been exciting. We start three sophomores and five juniors on D and then a, just a handful of seniors, so they're very, very young and they're growing up quickly, so everybody knows that to be a great team and ultimately to win a championship, you better play great D, so we're pleased with their progression, but we also expect them to continue to progress because they're not there yet. 
There's been a lot of talk about your quarterback, DJ Nelson, and he's committed to Utah State. Is that something, you know, is it, is it good for him to get that out of the way? He doesn't have to think about it, or do you worry about those type of things, you know, getting in players' heads? It's an individual thing, and I'm happy for DJ. It's what he wanted to do. He's got an opportunity to go up to Utah State, which he's grown up here, and it's a great program. Coach Anderson and his guys are doing a super job. So I'm personally thrilled for him. It's always exciting as a coach when you get a kid that signs a Division One scholarship offer because those things are hard to come by. So he's well, he's very, very deserving of that. He's worked his whole life, and it's been a dream of his, and, and hard work pays off, and he's having a great year, and we expect him to continue to have a super year. Last question, what concerns you the most about the Bobcats? Oh, they've done a good job defensively. They did a great job against both Mountain Crest and Box Elder defensively, so they're putting pressure on people, and uh, their defense coordinator is doing a good job getting in good calls based upon the formations he's seeing. So that and then the Valley rivalry, as you said before, anything can happen in these games. So we're excited to play, and uh, we're going to play our best. All right, thanks. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thanks, Eric. No, Coach Favero talking about his team a little bit there. I I don't know oh, what there is if you're if you're you know if you're talking about things that are a, a negative for this Logan team. Maybe you'd be nitpicking, Lee, because they seem to do everything well. Oh, well, they do. In their first six games of the season, they've scored 49, 32, 56, 48, 40, and 49, and their defense has played really well. They gave up 10 points against Bonneville two weeks ago and seven against Roy last week. So that's pretty good stuff for Logan. Yep, not so bad. On the other side of the ball, the Skyview Bobcats might be starting to find their groove a little bit. Played well against Mount, a good Mountain Crest team. And then uh, last week beat a very good Box Elder team. So let's take a listen to what Coach Ander talked with me about just a few minutes ago. Well, these are the games, Coach, that uh, these kids seem to live for. You know, the, the guys up the street that they've known since Little League and everything. Like to, they like to get over on them, and it would be especially big for them to come in here, you know, against a team that's undefeated and seems to be rolling like Logan. Speaking of rolling, seems like maybe the last couple of weeks you guys have found something. Came up just short against Mount Crest, but that was a big win against Box Elder last week. Quality team. Yeah, it was. I was really proud of our kids. They've got strong character. Uh, they, they've kept their heads in there in a very difficult schedule. And, uh, and and uh, they keep improving, and so we're, we're excited for this test tonight and see what we can do tonight. You read my mind. I was, the next question was about that difficult schedule. I mean, the teams you've played have a combined record of 30, 9, and 1. I mean, did you have any idea going in, or did you just think, we want some pretty good teams to get our guys ready for the battles late in the year? You know, we, we do want to raise our level at this program, um, and we felt like this is the next step to help us uh, achieve that. Uh, you know, we uh, will go up against anybody, and you can see it in our kids' eyes. Uh, they, they're not scared to play anybody any night. Um, now, that doesn't always mean a victory, but boy, it, there's a different attitude in these young men as they want to go out and play the game of football and play it with anybody that comes across their path. What concerns you the most about the Grizzlies? Can you narrow it down to one thing? They, they do a lot of things well. You do a lot of things well, but is there one key to the game if you could narrow that down? You know, it's a hard thing for me to narrow it down to a key. If I had to, I think it'd be the team that makes the least mistakes, has got the best opportunity to win in a game like this. Um, uh, you know, it usually comes down to something simple like that, is uh, just keeping your game clean and then hopefully causing mistakes for the other team. All right, Coach, good luck tonight. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Well, why not? Now the Logan Grizzlies getting set to make their way out onto the field just a couple of minutes away from kickoff. But Lee, you know, Skyview seems to have been slowly building. If you look at the, we talked a little bit, I did with Coach Ander. I mean, the teams they played so far this season are combined 30, 9, and 1. I mean, that's about a 76% win percentage. Uh, for their opponents, so they're battle tested, that's for sure. Well, here's the problem you're now in region play, and uh, you only have one win in region play against uh, Box Elder, lost a tough one to Mountain Crest a couple weeks ago. You got to start winning these region games because all that great experience playing a tough team doesn't matter if you don't get to the playoffs. All right, the Grizz getting set to come out onto the field. The Bobcats already there. We'll take a break and come back with the kickoff. It's Skyview at Logan. Something new around every turn with Wendy's 99 cent everyday value menu. My, my, my 99. My, my, my 99. Discover new choices like our new Monterey Ranch crispy chicken sandwich. All white meat, melted Monterey Jack, and a creamy ranch sauce. 
Or try our new crispy chicken Caesar wrap with tender all white meat chicken and shaved Asiago cheese. So hit the road to a Wendy's and see just how good 99 cents can taste. It's fun to pick a show you like and watch it every single night until your family has to stage an intervention. It's fun to look and see what's new when you're hanging with your crew because it's fun to see what catches your attention. With over 60,000 choices on TV and online, no one delivers on demand like Xfinity. It's fun for you, it's fun for me, it's everything you want to see. It's endless fun to do Xfinity. Back at Crimson Field, Logan and Skyview. The Grizzlies out on the field warming up. Skyview all huddled up there at the other end. Let's take a look. Last week, our player of the game is Nick Carver, and Nick Carver played a heck of a ball game. He did have a great game uh, through the air and on the ground as well, and that's a great pass to Mitch Berryhill. Uh, that was an 89-yard pass reception, if I recall, and Mitchell's looking around for somebody to chase him down. And great pass, great reception. They tried that a couple times in the game and finally hooked up for a, a score. Yeah, they figured they could get downfield against Box Elder, and they sure did there. But Carver, you know, he ran well and he threw exceptionally well. It's the best performance that we've seen by Carver, at least on a, on a Valley Channel game this season. Well, they're going to have to have that same type of perform performance tonight out of Nick Carver and the entire offense of Skyview because as good and spectacular and lauded as this uh, Logan offense is, I think their defense is pretty damn good as well. Yeah, I think that's the key. Now, you know, I'm a defensive guy. I like the defense, <laughs> I appreciate good offense, but when Logan has been exceptional, that, that offense seems to produce points and, and yards, but when they've been had exceptional teams, it's because they've had a defense that can stand right up there with that offense. And this this year, it is a young defense, but it'll they'll get after you. Skyview will have to find ways to attack that defense because their best defense may be to keep the Logan offense off the field. True, and that's, that's a great point you made about the good defense of Logan. It makes me think that they're keeping a short field quite often for a very potent offense, and DJ Nelson and the rest of the guys for Logan. They talked about the opponent's winning percentage for Skyview. Well, Logan is not quite as impressive the people they've taken on. You only can play who's put put in front of you, including Skyview tonight. Their opponents are 20 and 21. But look at the next three games. This is where Logan will really be tested. The next three games going into the playoffs. An in Valley rivalry game tonight, but Mountain Crest next week's a four and two team. At Mountain Crest. Box Elder here in Logan's a four and two team and East is six and zero. Oh. Hmm. A combined 14 and four between those last three teams. So talk about a tune up before the playoffs. Skyview will start at their own 20 as that one goes right to the back of the end zone. And we'll take a look at the Skyview offense first and get to see that Logan defense that we talked about. And it is a young, young defense. They finally found some size here at Logan. They have been uh, undersized for many years but done wonders with it, but uh, now Little size, you're right. Coach Rivera's using it to his advantage. And not only are they big, but they're very quick. They have great uh, team speed on defense. Corner to the far side of the field, Johnny Luke. He's an interception machine. Carver throws the out, and it's complete five yards downfield. His target is Mitchell Larson. Well, that's a good way to come out and get things started, get your quarterback in rhythm, and make a pretty easy pass out on the flat and a good reception for about five yards. This time they're going to give to Watts. Watts tries to cut back, burrows forward for a couple, and it'll be third down and three. Watts 56 carries for 219 yards on the season. Scored a touchdown. He has great speed. If he can get through that first line of the defense, he's very fast. We talked a lot about Sean Giro and what a hard runner he is. He's pretty fast, but Watts, their fastest running back. And they well, like him in that spread offense. They run Giro right there. Yeah, they run differently. Number 20 Giro. He's he's more of a pinball wizard. He'll bounce right off the tackle and get more yardage. <laughs> Here's the give to Giro. Giro, two hands on the ball, spun down, short of the first down. Maybe picks up a yard. 
Logan's defense still trying to tear that ball out of there. It's Jacoby Wildman, number 56. And he plays like a wild man. Yes, he does. He's, a, he's just a junior, like you mentioned, a very young defense for Logan. Stand him up. I think the whistle is about to be blown right there, and that's where Wildman gets his hand in there. Caden Anderson making the, making the tackle, number nine. And Egbert back 